Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this is actually the fourth part of a five-part series on shooting video on a DSLR. In the very first part, we talked about all the basics of video, shutter angles, and things you needed to know to make sure that you get the best looking videos in your camera. The second episode, we talked about lighting for video. In the third part, we talked about getting great sounding audio. We talked about microphones, and we said that I would show you how to make sure that that audio and video could sync up in post-production, and that's what we're gonna focus on in this episode. I'm also going to be giving you some uh, basics of post-production and overview of the editing software that you might want to use. Well, speaking of software, for those of you who are brand new to shooting video, you'll probably be asking yourself, what software do I need? Well, we can break it up into really three categories. Uh, for those people that are doing this as a hobby and you know, don't really want to spend a lot of money on that, well, there are some uh, software applications that you can get for free and actually are probably already on your computer. If you're a Windows user, there is Microsoft's Windows Movie Maker. It's a great software application that will allow you to do some basic editing and you can put things on the web and YouTube and get them to your friends and family and it's free. It's built into your computer. If you're on a Mac, well, there's Apple's iMovie. It's also built in and allows you to do the same kind of stuff. And so that's where I would start if you're brand new to editing. Well, if you've tried those out and there are some things that you want to do that you can't do, well, there are some software packages that are a little bit more robust and they're not super expensive. There is Adobe's Premiere Elements. Now that's a great option if you're working either on a PC or a Mac. It's not super expensive and it really gives you some advanced editing capabilities or you can use Final Cut um, Express. And again, that is a, a really nice introductory software application that will let you do a lot of professional level work for not a lot of money. So those are really, really good places to start and that's where I suggest you begin if you have some money to spend on some editing software. Well, if you're doing this work as a professional, maybe you're shooting a lot of videos for weddings, uh, doing documentary uh, shooting, things like that, where you really need to output a lot of work at a very high quality to different output sources like a DVD or Blu-ray or web uh, to different clients, you really need a professional editing uh, suite. And so there are two brands or two uh, applications that I recommend, depending on what your uh, budget is and what you're gonna be doing with their videos. If you're on a PC, I think hands down the winner is Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. In fact, the whole creative suite will really allow you to do a lot of advanced editing things and animating and doing some uh, post-production color correction. And that is a software application. It's a suite of uh, software applications that we've been using for years to make videos and do uh, DVD animations and, and mastering and all kinds of things. And it is one of the industry standards. Well, there's another industry standard, and it's actually the suite of tools that we use to create Adorama TV every single day, and that is Apple's Final Cut Studio. That only works if you're on a Mac, but it is a phenomenal suite of tools to allow you to create videos and master those out to DVD, correct audio and color and all kinds of things. And so we actually use both of those depending on what kind of output that we need. So if you have to choose one or the other, look very closely at the different pros and cons, maybe do some Google searches, and you'll find the one that works best for you. Now, um, once you have your software application and you want to start going in and doing some things, well, that's where we're going to go next. So coming up, I'm going to give you an overview of what an editing software looks like. But before we do that, I need to talk about something that's really, really important to uh, video shooters and editors. And this is really going to come in uh, in the next episode when we get things ready for the web. It's something called a codec. Now, a codec stands for compression, decompression, and it's a little piece of software that you install and your editing application uses that to decode the videos that you put on it. And then once you get it all edited, encode those and get them ready to go somewhere else. Now there are all kinds of codecs, hundreds of them, 
but there are some that are very, very uh, industry standard and they're used all the time. The ones that uh, you probably need to be familiar with, the big one is called H.264, and that is what uh, is the new standard for all the web videos that you see. We're going to talk a lot about H.264 in next week's episode, but that is a standard of compression that's used by a lot of camera manufacturers, and so a lot of the cameras that you use when you're shooting, it's compressing into the H.264 codec. And that's pretty good news if you want to take that and go straight to the web, but it's not great news if you want to edit those videos because that is not a codec that is usually used for editing, which is a bummer. Sometimes you have to take extra uh, steps to get those videos from your, your camera into your editing software. So if you're having issues and you can't get the videos that you've shot into your editing suite to actually edit, it's probably an issue with the codec. And the codec that we use here uh, for most of the stuff is uh, Apple's ProRes. So it's a QuickTime format, QuickTime ProRes format that allows us to edit and output and get things ready for the web and to make sure that things look great on DVDs and all kinds of things. Now again, we're going to be talking a lot more about codecs in next week's episode, but that's just a heads up. One of the things that you want to consider is which codecs ship with which uh, software editing suite or which do you have to buy. So again, Adobe Premiere uh, CS5 that and Final Cut Studio come built in with all kinds of codecs and they're really, really powerful and will allow you to do almost any editing that you need to do. Okay, well now that we know some of the overview and the basics of what we're gonna talk about, let's dive right in. We're gonna hop on a computer and I'm gonna walk you through some of our post-production steps. All right, well now that we know all about that stuff, let's talk about what we can do once we get into our computer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can use a lot of different applications, but we're gonna to stick to Final Cut Studio because that's what we use most commonly here at uh, our studio. Now what we're going to do here first, I want to talk about some things that are common to all editing applications and that is the interface and setting in and out points and understanding the timeline. So uh, let's go really quickly through this interface. On the left hand side there's usually a window where you see a video and that's called the preview window and that's specific to any video that you have clicked on and you want to see exactly what's going on. <laughs> there's Don yawning, that's really great. She's going to love that. Um, so what you can do is you can uh, load this into the preview window. You can mark some things called in and out points. In other words, where do you want that clip to start and where do you want it to stop? And then you can build your video one step at a time. So let's take a look at this. I've got uh, a couple of video clips in here for a basic edit. And when I go down here, there's this little uh, time indicator and I can drag that and it's called scrubbing. In other words, I am zipping along here. Like it. I can actually hear the audio scrubbing through that. Here we go. So I want to know exactly where to start this. That looks good right there. So what I need to do is set an endpoint. And so I can do that um, by clicking I on my keyboard. And see right here, there's this little indicator that says this is where this is going to start. Now, depending on the uh, editing software you're using, uh, using, it's going to give you a different indicator, but every single editing uh, suite has an in and out function. So now I'm going to zip over here. There she's done there. So I'm going to hit O for out. And now you can see that there's this uh, area that I want to use. Now then what I can do is uh, I'm going to go down here and make a couple adjustments. I can then take this and on Final Cut Studio, I can just click Insert. I'll drag it over there. And it's going to say, hey, this clip doesn't match the sequences setting. Now, this is something that, again, is about the codecs. And I'll say, yes, I want to adjust this so that my video plays just fine. I've got that on the timeline. Now I'm going to go over here and uh, look at a different clip. And we've slated that. Zip more. There she is. Okay, now she's starting. So I'll make that my N by pushing I on my keyboard. She smiles. That means she's done. So now what I can do is drag this over here and say insert. And you can see down here on our timeline, what we're doing is we're putting one clip after another. And so uh, now we have video over here. And this is what we see when we're done with the video. In other words, this is our actual program. And you can see that this... And so there you have it, your very, very basic, very first edit. Now what we can do is we can do some other things. So I'm going to take uh, one more video here. This is Don outside. And I'm going to just take this 
and I want to say I want the video but not the audio and that's what these little guys do right here it says do you want to put video and audio on there I just want my video so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it right on top of this and what that does I'm going to zoom out here really fast now I can take this instead of setting an in and out point I can just take the edges and drag them so I'm going to drag this one in drag that one out now when it's really small like this it's really difficult to see so you have some tools here to drag things around and zoom in so that's what I'm doing and now what I could do is put this over the top here now we get this little red line here and what that's saying is this needs to be rendered because we were uh, uh, editing in um, one codec and we just switched to another and we're mixing those two worlds and so this right here needs to be fixed so I can do that by going up here and saying sequence render both so that's going to render both the audio and video and as we said in the beginning the codecs can really trip you up so you have to understand those unfortunately we don't have time to go into all of that so I'm rendering this right now and now we're ready to go now you can see that as I play this we're gonna have this sort of uh, video that pops in in a weird place but here it is D Mark II. This is a built -in and you can see how that just goes right above that and so it's just like in layers in Photoshop the uh, things that are on tracks above tracks below anything that's on top is going to obscure anything that's below it now one other thing I could do here is I'm going to go here to my timeline I've selected this I can actually resize this thing so I'm going to resize it and put it over here and make it maybe a little window and I can uh, rotate that and this is really cool I can just do these really really quickly so there we have it there's our video once again we need to render it so I'm going to do that with the keyboard sh shortcut alt R and that's going to go in and render that in other words it's resizing that video tilting it and all the stuff that we wanted it to do and now just like if you're familiar with Photoshop you can see how these work just like layers now I have this little video right up there and that's all that is so those are in and out points uh, changing in and out points by dragging on the edges of your video uh, adding stuff on layers adding different audio so the next thing we want to do is we want to talk about how to sync our audio and our video we talked about uh, that when we did all of our microphone checks let's talk about exactly how to do that so I'm going to go over here to uh, Don testimony now these little tabs that I'm doing here these are called sequences and a sequence is just a container that contains different audio uh, video clips and so those video clips make up a timeline which make up a video and so you can use those sequences to organize how things are going so what I'm going to do here is I've put some things in here previously and I need to take those out so I'm just going to delete those now what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, Don's interview and we have two clips here we have Don testimony which is this one that I've been playing with and we have a problem because it already has an in and out point and it's been uh, uh, you know, uh, tilted and so we need to fix that. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna reset everything really quickly and there we go. So everything's been reset, that's really good. All of our filters and everything are good. So now we have Don um, set up just right and then we also have um, this right here which is an encoded video which we did to really make sure that things work out fast again it's that codec thing and that's what we're going to be using here so the very first thing I need to do is I need to find out where that that uh, slate hit and so what I can do is I can go in here there is a tab that says stereo left and right and I'm going to look for this telltale sign which is this big spike on the waveform and so you can see that we have small little lines small little lines boom a big huge one and that is almost always where the slate hit because it overloaded the audio and so if I play that you can hear yeah that's that's it so I want to hit the exact frame that that uh, slate clicked on so I'm going to zoom in here and I can go frame by frame that's the frame now I'm going to hit M for mark that's going to mark that frame saying this is the exact point where that sound happened okay so that's done um, also notice just a, a point that I think is very interesting notice how this very very straight slate looks bent so that's that uh, jelly effect we have for the rolling shutter that we talked about in the very first episode when we were talking about shooting video on a DSLR so you can see it right there in real time so now we have this little mark on there we need to do the same thing on the audio now the thing is with this audio this audio was shot 
um, while we were making the video. So we had the audio rolling for a long time before we started the DSLR. And so if you look on this audio file, you can see there's lots and lots and lots of stuff. This is uh, me talking, and I'm actually on this channel here. And then right here, you can see that all of a sudden things go away. That's when I stop talking to let Don start talking. So that's just a little uh, visual indicator to tell us where to start looking for that slate. So we can go right about here, and I will play this file. And go ahead and slate. And there it was. Go ahead and slate. So I'm going to zoom in on this. And now you can see pretty clearly that there is the telltale slate look. And I'm going to go frame by frame by hitting my right arrow. That's the one. Hit M to mark that. Great. Now what we have is we have two different clips. Both have a mark on them. And now all we have to do is line up those marks and we will get our sync and it will look just good. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is instead of taking all of this stuff, right? We had a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to go just before that mark and I'm going to hit I to make that my endpoint because I don't need all of that. And then I'm going to go right at, I'm just going to leave it about there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down onto the timeline. And then I'm going to go get this file here that we put the mark on. I'm going to drag that down and see I'm going to have an issue here because I dragged the audio and the video together. I don't want to do that, so let me undo that. I need to click these right here. What I'm doing is I'm saying I want to take the video and put it on this track, but I don't want any audio to come with me because I have audio already on that from a different source. And so we need to do that or else we'll have two competing audio files. So I'm going to go down here and once again now I'm just going to drag that on top of that. Bonk. And now what I need to do is make sure that I get these all lined up. So I'm going to zoom in really fast here and I'm going to put my timeline right on that. And I'm going to drag this to the right. And then I'm going to just zoom in just a little bit closer to make sure. Yep. See very clearly these are all lined up. So now we have our audio from our audio device synced to our video from our video camera. And now when we zoom out here, I'm going to play this and we're going to see if our audio and video look good. So here we go. The microphone and go ahead and slate. Great. There it okay. goes and let's see if our itineraries were all planned out. The staff was so helpful with everything. Just like that, we have everything set up. And then I can go in here and I can start uh, trimming this using this thing. It's called a razor blade. Now the razor blade's really cool. So I'm going to go right where she starts talking. I'm going to click that and the razor blade slices everything on the timeline. So then I can just select this stuff, hit delete. I can go and razor blade where she stops talking. I'll do it about there because we don't need to see her talking too much. So then I'll do that, get rid of that. Take these, drag them over to the very start, and look at this. Now we have a video. The weekend was perfect. From the moment we arrived, everything was taken care of. Just like that. So we have our audio and our video all taken care of. It's perfectly in time, and that's how you do that. So now we know how to do our endpoints, our out points, how to put things on the timeline, how to put video on the timeline without audio, how to sync our audio to make sure everything is good. Now, once you have your video and you've created your masterpiece, the last thing you need to do is you need to export that file. And so on Final Cut and in most uh, applications, there's an export button our export uh, option there. So we're going to go in here and say export QuickTime Movie. Now we could use a uh, QuickTime conversion to convert it to a different thing, but I'm going to say I want this to come out as a QuickTime uh, Movie, and it's going to say where do you want to do that? Well, I have a folder that I created called Out, and that's where I put all of my final uh, movies that are uncompressed. This is like the big, huge, non-web ready version, and it's really high quality. Now I can go in here and say I want to use my current settings, or I can change this to a different codec. There's a ton of these. Or I can even use a custom setting and say I want it to be exactly this many pixels wide and high and I want it to be uh, this aspect ratio and field dominance needs to be this or that. That's the stuff we're going to talk about in the next episode because it's really, really impo important. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to use, oops, sorry about that. We're going to use our, um, our current settings. So I've messed it up. I'm going to go back here and say, no, I don't want custom. I want my current settings. There it is. Once we have that, I will say save, and that's going to export our little tiny video that takes about five seconds, and bam, there it is ready to go. If I go over here to my finder, I can 
go to my big video. I can go to my uh, folder here where we had that. There's Don testimony. The weekend was perfect from the moment. We there it is. That's our full 720p video ready to go. So in the next episode, we're going to take that video and we're going to get it all ready for the web and make sure that you know how to get things to look perfect on YouTube and other uh, social media sites. Well, there you have it. Those are some of the basics of post-production, making sure that your audio is synced to your video. Now, what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to take some videos that I've exported and edited, and we're going to put those into Compressor. It's a very special software tool to allow us to change the codecs and make sure that we have everything squeezed really tight to compress it and make it look great on the web. Now, that might seem simple, but it can be really complicated, and so we're going to be dedicating an entire episode just to compressing and getting the video ready for the web, and so that's next week. Now, I know we covered a lot of stuff in this uh, episode, and a lot of that we just skimmed the surface. Well, the cool thing is at the Adorama Learning Center, there are all kinds of articles that go into a lot more detail on things like codecs and choosing which software application is right for you and which cameras record in which uh, formats and all that kind of stuff. Some of the things that we just didn't have time to go through. So go over to the Adorama Learning Center and take a look at those articles so they will really, really help you get a grasp on that. And then join us next week for our final episode of post-production and we will wrap up this five-part series. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Remember, if you have questions about photography, you can always send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.